Right everyone, it's time to get a little bit of insight on Celtic's latest signing from Japan. It's Yuki Kobayashi and to find out all about the former Vissel Kobe defender, we're chatting to our good old friend, it's Sam Robson, a wee refresher. Sam is an analyst for Football Radar covering the Japanese top flight. Sam, it's been ages since we uh, since we last spoke. How are you getting on? Yeah, I'm doing very well, thank you. It has been a while. I thought you might raid us again in the summer, but you left Japan alone a little bit. But I guess it's starting up again. And yeah, it's a really interesting signing you've made. Yeah, shall we do a quick recap on uh, the, the four players we've had so far? You can talk as briefly as you want about them. Uh, Kyogo? He's been absolutely magnificent. I think maybe some of his finishing has let him down in the Champions League a little bit, but his mm. movement is so good. I think he's fit in so well there, and I just knew he'd be perfect for uh, Scottish football, and he, he has been. I think he's done fantastically. Hatati? Uh, oh, Rolls Royce of a player. Just the quality he has on the ball, the movement he has, the positions he takes up. I just think he's absolutely magnificent. He maybe gives the ball away a little too much, but he's trying those progressive passes, and I think he's only going to get better. Definitely. Uh, interesting one, Maida. What have you made I, I love Maida. He, he's there for a reason. The pressing is so key to the way that Ange plays, and just the closing down of goalkeepers. He wouldn't sell to the ball high up the pitch. I know that maybe there are issues with his game. Maybe his finishing, maybe you saw in the Japan game against Germany, he's not quite got the intelligence to stay on side in certain situations, but I think he's effective. And uh, Gucci? Yeah, he's just gone. The way his career has gone. Injuries at the wrong yeah. time. He's never really got an opportunity, and I'm sure I'll be seeing him again soon in Japan. Right, okay. Very interesting. And we should say, by the way, a busy wee period for you. You're obviously representing the, the Japan national team at the moment with the, the current kit. Um, but I guess it's a rewarding time for you as well, based on uh, the result against Germany. Oh, absolutely. You see so many players that I've covered for so many years just come and show their quality on the international stage and get their biggest ever victory for the Japan men's national team. Yeah, it was glorious to watch, that, especially that second half. Just, yeah, some of the quality on show. And, uh, yeah, it's a shame that we haven't got the likes of Kyogo and Hatate there as well joining in, but it just shows the depth that Japan have that they are able to leave out those two players. Uh, this video is actually going out after Japan's second match, so all of that may seem a bit daft if you go and lose to, to Costa Rica, but I kind of so feel that. like that's a game you'll certainly be looking to win, and if you win that, I guess you'll pretty much be, be through. Anyway, we'll chat about uh, Yuki Kobayashi. Uh, just like the, the three players that joined last January, it's one we've kind of known about for a wee while. It's been leaked from, from various sources, so it's not really a surprise, but when you first heard the name, uh, I think you said to me you were a little bit surprised with, with Kobayashi and Celtic? Yeah, well, it came with a lot of confusion as well because Kobe have two players called Yuki Kobayashi. We do. And the first I heard of it, I tweeted about the other guy uh, scoring a free <laughs> kick. And it was like, what do you think of these links to Celtic? Well, it's a 30-year-old midfielder. I don't think so. So that was confusing. But then, yeah, when it came, it's like, it's not necessarily a player I'd have picked out to say, yeah, he's definitely going to Europe, definitely going to Celtic. But the more you think about it, the more you can see why... Ange would look at this type of player. I think he fits the profile of exactly what he would like in that left-sided centre-back. And yeah, he's still a little bit raw, but in Japanese terms of 22, he's very experienced. He's got over 100 appearances in all competitions. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I don't necessarily think first choice straight away, but I mean, you never know. These types of players, uh, Japanese players in defence are so good on the ball. And that's why everyone is wanting now this more progressive style. And he's following in the footsteps of... Hiroki Ito, who has gone to Stuttgart, he was in J2, not really playing too much, but he's got that sort of profile. They brought him over for their youth team and he immediately starts and he's playing every game for Stuttgart. So hopefully it'll be a similar sort of progression for Kobayashi. Yeah, a couple of things I want to mention that, that Ange actually brought up. The first one is Ange very keen to mention that he's a left-sided centre-back. I believe he's left-footed as well and comfortable on that side. Yeah, very comfortable. That's where he's played forever, either on a back three as he did on a couple of loan spells or in that back, um, just a normal four. So he just opens up the play so much when you have that left footer on that side. And yeah, he's very good and very confident in taking the ball forward, either just running forward or breaking the lines with his passes. So yeah, a really good option in that sort of position. And the experience as well, you touched on it there, a lot of experience for a 22-year-old as he played a lot of football. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, he had, he's been at Kobe for a number of years coming through their youth system, not like 
a university player. So he's been in there. He's had a loan spell in J2 where he played for like the last six months and really came in. And he was 19 at the time, but he really improved their defence and helped them stay up for, for, from relegation. So he played every game there. Then he had a spell at Yokohama FC in the COVID season of 2020. So they were able, because there was no relegation in J1 that season, they were able to play pretty much whatever they liked. So they gave a lot of youth a chance. So he played pretty much every game that season and turned out to be their best player. I mean, they were so devastated when he was recalled to Kobe because, yeah, just the way that he does, like, one-on-one defending, he was, like, really praised for that, and his kind of general athleticism, but as well as just the, the ability to pass through the lines and just to be progressive and start attacks. Yeah, they were devastated when he went, and they really suffered the season afterwards. Then following that, I mean, he had a year with Vermaal and was still at um, Kobe. So he generally was going to be behind him. But to learn from a player like Vermaelen, who in terms of a profile of left-sided centre-back, there aren't be, haven't been many that are better than him. I mean, obviously he got a lot of injuries at Arsenal and Barcelona, but technically he's a terrific player. So he, yeah, learned from him, took over from him at the Euros when Vermaelen was still called up. So had a, yeah, a decent spell there. And then this season, it's been a tumultuous season for Kobe, but I think he'll have learned a lot from playing pretty much every game again this year. Yeah, I mean... When you mentioned Vermaelen there, it, 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 is that a, a comparison, a fair comparison with Kobayashi in terms of, I think Vermaelen's left-footed, isn't he? He kind of plays on the left-hand side, very good, you know, coming out with the, the ball as well. Is there similarities there? Yeah, I think he's definitely modelled his game on that sort of player, like him or Vertonghen as well. Those sorts of players, really com- comfortable on the ball, looking always to go forward. Just, yeah, I think it's not necessarily the one that is going to be going in for headed duels necessarily. He's not necessarily the first one to make the tackle. He'd rely on his centre-back partner to do that, but he's the one that drops in uh, and covers. And yeah, he's just really good positional sense. So yeah, I think Vermaal and Vertonghen and those sorts of players are definitely players that he's looked to kind of emulate. So we probably at this stage should really tackle, you know, what kind of player he is. And I know you, you've touched on it a wee bit al- already. Um, I've looked at a couple of scouting reports online and, Obviously, it's it's one person's opinion, but it, it seemed a few of them seem to suggest that he kind of has a bit of everything. He's decent in the air, quite quick, good in possession. Um, you know what? What as I say, you, you've already kind of answered it, I guess. But would you agree with with those things? Yeah, generally. I mean, I think his uh, like his aerial jewels or whatnot are quite high, but it's not like he goes in for too many. So maybe that's slightly yeah. misleading. It's not necessarily his game and. Maybe that would be something he would work on, but I think it's fairly easy to work on that sort of thing rather than he's got the raw ability to play exactly as Andrew wants. So I think there's a lot to mould there. Uh, yeah, he's fairly quick, but not necessarily the quickest, but he gets away with it because um, his positional sense is so good. So he's rarely caught out of position. So yeah, it doesn't necessarily need to be the quickest. And I think, yeah, as well as just his passing, which is obviously what he's mainly been brought in for, I just think it's that 1v1 defending. When he has to defend and he's up against someone, yeah, he's very good, especially on the floor. So, yeah, generally fairly well-rounded, but, yeah, it's just that progressive nature of his passing and the way that he will help set up attacks, which is kind of going to be vital to Celtic. Yeah, because I'm looking at this signing as, as, you know, potentially being, you know, Ange's idea of how to take us to the next level in terms of, you know, having a real balanced central defensive partnership, probably Carter Vickers on the right, and Kobayashi on the left and been able to sweep balls out to the left-hand side because if it's Starfelt or Jens who mainly play there for us at the moment, I think they're they're fine generally, but they always look a little bit uncomfortable, especially Starfelt, whereas I guess Kobayashi playing on the left-hand side will look really comfortable and be able to, to, to you know, to, to start attacks. Yeah, exactly. I think that's exactly what, how it will be. And he's looked comfortable for I mean, he's only 22, but it's never been a stage where in possession, he's ever looked uncomfortable. He's yeah. always confident in passing. Uh, very rarely does he make a mistake, but again, that doesn't really phase him. He will continue to play those passes. It's not like one misplaced pass and shouldn't go in his shell and just boot the ball clear. He will always play in that manner, and that's what Ange always encourages as well. So, yeah, I think it should be... It might take a little while to get going. I don't necessarily think he's going to be first in the door and going to be starting straight away, but yeah, he's definitely got all the ability and all the confidence in his in his ability to succeed at Celtic. Why do Japanese players seem to be so good technically, generally, wherever they play in the pitch? 
it's just the way of the training from a young age. You're always playing very small games. It's all about that first touch, that um, ability to pass the ball, and everyone does it. Whatever position you are, you and it's never going to be a case of hoofing the ball in any Japanese training session when you're young. It is all about that te that technique and quality. That's why so many players are so good and so confident with the ball at their feet. Yeah, very interesting. Um, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking. Is this something that Ange really sees Kobayashi as being, you know, the next big thing to come out from Japan, future Japan international, etc.? Or is it a bit of a punt from Celtic's part, thinking not a great deal of risk attached to this? What, what are you thinking? Well, there's never a risk when you take players from Japan, 22 year old going for a free transfer. I could learn about yeah. that for all day. But so, yeah, there is very little risk to it. And I mean, it's not like he has been on the verge of an international call up. He's not really been involved in the youth setup. Like, he's kind of the way that Japan work their youth setup, it's always focused on the next Olympics. So, Kobe actually kind of fits in the middle of that. Like, he wasn't ready for Tokyo in 2020 or 21, as it turned out to be. And he's going to be too old for the next one. So, he was never really part of that so and it's not like I, I wouldn't say anyone has been saying or oh, Yuki Kobayashi it's absolutely going to come into the Japan national team so I don't think it's anything on reputation or whatnot he's just seen the sort of profile he likes and thinks I can mold him into a really good player and I believe he can and, and it's very similar to Ito that I mentioned earlier who again was like he was a bit part player in J2 but Stuttgart saw something about the profile of the player and have molded him and he's now at the World Cup so yeah hopefully Ange can do the same. Would Ange have come into contact with Kobayashi when he was in Japan, or would they have kind of crossed paths? Um, well, he would have played against Yokohama FC. Like, it was a big derby game. Well, it was oh, yeah. fairly big. Yokohama are not necessarily the biggest club at the moment, but, yeah, he would have played against him, and so he would have seen him fairly close quarters. And again, yeah, he's probably played pretty well against him, a bit like Idaguchi, a bit like Hatate. Yeah, and he's definitely seen something in him. I mean, he knows this league inside out. There's still various of his contacts working within the Japanese game. So they'll have all alerted to him. I'm sure he'll have done a lot of work scouting out Kobayashi and knows exactly uh, what he will bring to the team. So, yeah, I'm sure he knows yeah, exactly how he'll look to mould him. Yeah. Um, I did a video just over a year ago looking at who our next signings from Japan could be. Uh, I had Maida and Hitati in there, by the way, just to, just to get that across. Um, I also had Ryuho Kikuchi, involved, I think, who's the, the partner of uh, Kobayashi yeah. at the back for Vissel Kobe. What makes Kobayashi a, a better option than him? Uh, just his ability on the ball. I think Kikuchi is a very good basic defender in terms of, yeah, he will get his tackles in, he will do his, yeah, heading away and whatnot, so like a solid defender, but I think those sorts of defenders, as good as he is, there are a dime a dozen, you can find plenty of players a bit like Kikuchi. Kobayashi has that little bit extra, which I think is exactly what uh, um, what's, uh, what uh, Ange requires, like Kikuchi is not going to be an ever an upgrade. I don't think on Carter Vickers or anything like that. So, yeah, I think he's quite liked at Kobe, but I think Ange has definitely picked the right option. Right. I'm intrigued by Kobayashi if he's, you know, really good in the ball, whether Ange is obviously well aware of that and whether we'll, we'll see a difference to, to Celtic's ability to, to be able to, to play out. Um, I think in Europe, when teams are pressing you, it's, it's more of an issue than than domestically. Where where do you see him fitting into our centre back options? So obviously we, we currently have Carter Vickers who, you know, I think everyone would agree is our, our standout centre back. He plays on the right side. And effectively whoever he plays with plays on the other side. So Starfelt, Jens and Stephen Welsh who's a little bit below Starfelt and Jens I would say in the pecking order. Um I would say all three three of those. Certainly Starfelt and Welsh are better on the right but play in the left um, because Carter Vickers I think would only play in the right. Um, I guess Kobayashi has the left left sided thing in his favour. How, how quickly do you see him coming in and actually staking a place for the, the to start? Well I mean he could come in. I don't, I don't think it'll be straight away. I think probably Jens from what I've seen I think he's probably still going to be first choice there and he's got this kind of six months where it's so difficult to come in in the middle of a season as well so he might not get too much game time I don't think in this first season but maybe after the summer maybe after he's had that time then he might be looking to challenge to start next season but yeah I'd probably slot him in somewhere between Starfelt and Welsh in terms of that position on the left side and yeah he might maybe a couple of injuries gets him a game and he might come in and really impress but yeah I think it might be next season that you start to see a bit more of him in the first team. Okay, Ange touched on that six-month kind of 
period as well to, to bed him in. I don't think there's the same pressure on him as there was Hitati and Maida because they kind of, and Kyogo as well, I guess, they had to kind of come in and hit the ground running. Yeah, well, I mean, Kyogo had to come off the plane and play pretty much <laughs> the first game. So, yeah, that was a lot of pressure. And, yeah, it's not... I think Hatate had done a bit more in Japan to, like, to suggest that he can come in and start. And Kyogo definitely had. And as well as Maida, he was, like, first... He was um, top scorer. So, yeah, they had a lot of pressure on them. I think Kobayashi, everyone sees that this is more for one for the future. So, I don't think anyone's thinking, oh, if he doesn't get hit the ground in those first two months, he's got to go. I think you've got to, yeah, give him a lot of time. And, I mean, a five-year deal shows... The, the faith that you've got in him and you think, yeah, he's going to become a good player for Celtic. So, yeah, just give him a bit of time and, yeah, start our next season, I think. Yeah, you might see him and Carter Vickers as the first-choice pairing. OK, interesting. Um, just to get this nailed down in case anyone has, has fallen asleep during this video, not, not that they would, Sam, <laughs> I'm I'd, sorry. Say, I'd say we're very interesting people, but just in case, <laughs> uh, main strengths, just, just reiterate his main strengths to us. Main strengths are his uh, positioning. He's like a, like awareness at the back. He knows where to be. Knows knows yeah where to cover. He doesn't dive into challenges. And yeah, left side of centre back, progressive with the ball, very confident. He can run with the ball. He can progress the ball up the field. So yeah, very comfortable on the, in possession. And it'll be ideal to start attacks for Celtic. And uh, weaknesses. I don't know if we really touched on that, did we? Weaknesses, well, I think they were shown probably at the start of this season because Kobe were all over the place in general and he la lost his holding midfielder, he lost like, goalkeepers at the back, but Marlon wasn't in the squad. So sometimes decision-making was an issue, especially if he wasn't comfortable with his partner as well. And yeah, he kind of needs that guiding force. Like he had that in his two loan spells with older players behind, uh, next to him. Eventually when Kikuchi came back this season, he kind of had that as well. So yeah, it was just a little bit of decision-making I think was his issue, but Again, I think that'll be pretty much worked on and playing alongside Carter because if that's the case, I think he'll absolutely help him on. So I have no major concerns about that. And he improved that as this season went on. He ended the season very well, helped Kobe, who were bottom of the league for large parts, despite all their players. He helped them come up um, yeah, to very safe in mid-table. So yeah, he's definitely shown improvement already. But yeah, maybe a couple of times, a couple of lapses in concentration are his issue. Right, very good. Uh, more Japanese signings for Celtic? I guess it's inevitable at this stage. Yeah, it is probably inevitable. I'm not 100% sure who it might be. because There's, no, there's no one left, mate. There's no one left in Japan. Well, no, there's always a production line <laughs> of Japanese players that you'll take from me for free or whatnot. But yeah, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think because there's like everyone I think of plays in that kind of Hatate and O'Reilly position. You've got lots of those players. So I'm mm. not necessarily sure that's where you're looking at. Um, the one I, well, there's two I'd like you to keep an eye on. Makoto Mitsuta, who came in, he was a bit like um, Hatate and he came through university. He had his first season this year. San Freccio were bottom of the table when he, the new manager came in, gave this Mitsuta a start. He then got double figures in goals and assists. They got to um, two cup finals, finished third. He was absolutely magnificent. He was my player of the year. Kind of plays in behind the strikers. It's not ideal necessarily for Celtic, but he could absolutely play on the wing. He could absolutely play deeper. So I'd definitely look at him. He's only young. Again, yeah, I don't think he'll last in Japan too much longer before he's taken on. And then the other one, I'd go Rayon Yamahara, who is a left back for Shimizu Espos. They were dreadful defensively, but he still made the uh, J Talk podcast uh, team of the year. He was magnificent. He can play that inverted wing back position that Greg Taylor, I think, plays really well. And Ange definitely wants his. Terrific um, with his set pieces. He's a good shot on him. He's got that ability to come inside and play in. So, yeah, only I think he's 20 years old. So, again, it would be a similar sort of signing to Kobayashi. But I think, yeah, Yamahara would be another one that would fit the profile for Ange Postacoglu. Right, we've noted those names down. And I'm sure everyone watching this has as well. And we'll, we'll hold you to that, Sam. Uh, we will uh, catch up with you. I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying we'll catch up with you again at, at some stage in the, the not too distant future. Uh, by the way, uh, at FR Soccer Sam on Twitter to find out what Sam's saying. And as you can, uh, I'm sure, get from this video, he knows what he's talking about when it comes to um, Japanese football. Sam, thanks again, mate. We'll catch up soon. Well, thank you very much for having me, and I yeah, hopefully Kobe uh, yeah does really well for Celtic, and yeah, you continue winning the league, winning whatever competitions you're in. So yeah, thank yeah, thanks again for having me.